Good morning, first graders. Happy Wednesday. Today's our Wednesday story read aloud day, so we're going to get started right away with a new story called David's Drawings. Before we jump right into our story, we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about our vocabulary words, and we're going to talk about some of our reading strategies, those reading super, super star strategies we have to make sure we're using in order to make sure we understand our story. So the two superstar strategies we're going to use today are sequencing, which is what tells you what happens first, next, and last in a story. Now I put up three fingers, but that doesn't mean there's only three things that happen, right? There's more than that. But if you use time words like first, next, last, finally, those are the words that you use when you're sequencing, right? Awesome. So. The next thing we're going to talk about is cause and effect. Something that happens and why it happens. We've done a lot of work with this before, so you are very familiar with it. But for example, cause, you run over a nail with your bike. Effect, your tire is probably going to go flat, right? So there's going to be a lot of cause and effect that we see in this story. Um, let's get started with our vocabulary. So, we've got quite a few words this week, I have to tell you, but we're going to be just fine in getting those done. So, as you notice at the top of my screen here, there are three categories, okay? Three. There's the word, the part of speech, and the pronunciation. Part of speech is going to tell us if it's a noun, an adjective, or a verb. Okay, and there's also something called an adverb that we've talked about in class and it's been a while, but a verb, an adverb just describes how an action is completed. And we've talked about this in class before and I bet even some of your work, if you've saved it, you might still have it at home about adverbs. Okay, so let's go to the number one on the sheet here. Number one is the word hung, hung. Now slide over one column. Hung is a verb. What's a verb? A verb is an action word, right? Good, it shows action. Okay, and what does hung mean? Hung is the past tense of the word hang. So, to put something up somewhere. Okay, I hung up my wet laundry instead of putting it in the dryer. Number two. Number two is the word fresh. Fresh. I like saying fresh. And it is an adjective. And what do adjectives do? Adjectives describe. So we know that fresh is something that describes something. So again, going back to my sentence of laundry, fresh laundry out of the dryer smells so good. Fresh smells clean, new, fresh flowers would mean you just picked them, right? So that is our word there. That third column going up and down at the top says pronunciation. That is how you pronounce the word. And as we know, sometimes we read words and they do not sound like they're spelled. So they kind of write it out in a funny way. And we're going to see that with the next word. Number three is shyly. Shyly. And the part of speech is an adverb. Shy. Shyly. By adding that L-Y, it makes it an adverb to tell how an action is done. I shyly handed in my test because I didn't think that I did well. Shyly. And if you look at the pronunciation column, that does not look like how shyly is spelled, does it? No. But we have sh I with a long I. That straight line across is telling us it's a long I. Then the L-E telling us it's a long E as well. Shyly. Very good. Number four, began. Began means to start something. Began, but it's in the past. That is a verb. A verb is a action word. A verb is an action word. To begin means to start. Began means you started something in the past. I began the first grade in September. That's a long time ago, wasn't it? We're about to be second graders. 
Very good. And then you see in the pronunciation, you have that long E with the line across. B, GAN. Number five is cool. And cool can have a couple meanings, right? Cool can mean like, yeah, I'm a cool guy. Or cool can deal with the kind of temperature you have. So to be nice and cool, not warm. And cool is an adjective. And what do adjectives do? Adjectives describe. Very good. So just describe how you're feeling as far as temperature would be cool. Cool breeze blew through the wind, blew through the trees. <laughs> Number six is sure. Sure. Positive. 100%. You know it for sure. Now sure sounds like there's an SH. Is there an SH in sure? No. Sure is an adverb. Again, describes how you're going to do something else. So I am sure about handing in my test. Okay, sure. And if you look at the pronunciation, they show you that SH. Number seven, take a second, make sure your eyes are on number seven. Number seven is grinned. Show me a grin. Grin is another name for smile. Yeah. Now we have an ED at the end, which means it already happened. It's in the past. Grinned. And that is a verb. A verb is a action word. Very good. Grinned. Now, look at how it's pronounced. Look at that last column. It looks like it says grr, i, nd, grinned. And I know that's a sh short, short I because it doesn't have that long I at the top line. Okay, so pr for pronunciation, they add these little funny little symbols and things to make sure we know if it's long or short. That would be kind of helpful when we read too, wouldn't it? Good. So grinned is to smile. In the past, I grinned at the dog down the street. Number eight, we just have two, three more. Eight is fluffy. Fluffy is an adjective. Adjectives describe. And fluffy means full and soft. Okay, you could pet the fluffy puppy. Or maybe when you're, there's your laundry example again, when you pull your towels out of the laundry, they are nice and fluffy. Number nine we have, number nine, is fistful. Fistful. Okay, fistful is a noun. And what is a noun? It's our first noun on our words today. What is a noun? A person, place, or thing. So fistful would be a thing. Grab a fistful of popcorn. Grab a fistful of marbles. Grab a fistful of Legos. Fistful, okay, here's your fist and it is full. So there are kind of two words in this. Full in this word is not a word on its own because it doesn't have a double L at the end. But fistful is a compound word technically, right? A fist full of something and it is a noun, very good. We have one more word here. I'm going to try to make sure you guys can see it. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. Uh, this might be as good as we can do today if you look at number 10. Neatly. Neatly. Neatly means you do something neat. By adding L-Y, that makes it an adverb. I neatly put the recessed toys back where they belong. To do something very organized, very cleanly, neatly. I bet your mom loves it when you neatly pick up your toys. Or you put away all of your clothes neatly instead of just throw them around. Very good. And there's that adverb. And if you want to look at the pronunciation, you can see n, e, long e because that line across the top, t, and then ul, e, neatly. Very good. Nice job. All right, well guess what? I think we are ready to read. What do you think? Yeah? Awesome. You guys are great. So our story of the week is David's drawings. David's drawings. And you can see in the title, I have an apostrophe S. And what does that apostrophe S tell me? 
that it's someone something. We don't have a bunch of Davids. We have David something. What is it? His drawing, okay? We're going to talk about our genre and our essential questions of the story, the purpose for reading this today, okay? At the end of the story, you should be able to answer these essential questions. So make sure today our goal is to be able to answer this essential question. Have you worked together with classmates or friends on an art project? What did you learn? So you're going to try to make a connection to the story, David's drawings. This is a realistic fiction story, meaning what? It didn't happen, but it could. Very good. Nice job. So as you read today, I want you to focus. I want you to think about what happens first, next, last, in each part of the story, and then be able to summarize it at the end. Let's get to our reading. Genre. Realistic fiction. Essential questions. Have you worked together with classmates or friends on an art project? What did you learn? David's Drawings, written and illustrated by Catherine Falwell. So Catherine Falwell, this person, did both the pictures and the words. One gray winter day, David saw a beautiful tree. I love how they used the uh, detail here to describe the day. They didn't just say one day. They said one gray winter day. Lots of detail. I like that. When he got to school, David took off his boots and hung up his jacket. He found a pencil and a fresh piece of paper. What is the first thing that David did when he got to school? Do a little sequencing here. What is the first thing that he did? When he got to school, David took off his boots. That's the first thing he did. Good sequencing. What's the next thing he did? Go back in your text. Hung up his jacket. The last thing he did on this page, he found a pencil and a fresh piece of paper. Let's look at our vocabulary words and review them. Hung, a form of the verb hang, to place something so it does not touch the ground. I hung my coat on the hook. Hung. Good, and our next one, fresh. Fresh, clean and not used. Mom gave me a fresh piece of paper to start over with. Fresh. Very good. Let's turn the page. David thought for a moment. Then he made a drawing of the tree he had seen. Oh, that tree from the first page. Nice tree, said Amanda, but it needs color. David got some crayons and made the tree brown. Amanda smiled. Some grass, too, she said. David handed her a green crayon. Here, you can make some, he said shyly. Amanda colored green grass under the tree. Hmm. What is the first thing that they did with the tree? Let's go back to some sequencing. What's the first thing that they added to that tree? Amanda and David. Yeah, first on this page, page 108, where you can see right above David's head, it says David got some crayons and he made the tree brown. So he made the tree brown. Then what did they add with the green crayon? Some grass. Very good. And if you can go back in your text. Yeah. Now I can also tell something too using another one of my re reading strategies, inferencing. 
How do you think David is as a person? Do you think he's mean and kind of didn't want to share and let Amanda help him draw? No, he let this little girl come up and help, which was really nice. Definitely good at sharing, David is, I would say. David also said, here, you can make some, he said shyly. Shyly, acting in a nervous and quiet way around people. The boy shyly looked at his new classmate. Shyly. Very good. And that's an adverb, adding that L-Y at the end. So here's how our tree looks right now, bottom right-hand corner, right there. That tree needs leaves, Ryan said. David looked at his drawing and then began to add leaves. He let Ryan add a few more. Look, said Jamal, I have these cool stickers. May I put some on the picture? Sure, said David. Good. So what did they add next? What happened next? What was added next? First, we colored it brown. Then we added grass. What happened after that? Yes, if you go back in the second paragraph on this first page, David looked at his drawing and then began to add leaves. Yes, and he let Ryan add some. So again, working together. How nice and kind. What happened after that? Yes, on this next page, Jamal came over and said, I have these cool stickers. And he added them. Now in our sentence here, does cool mean he was hot, but now he's cool, nice and chilled? Or does cool mean something awesome? I have these cool stickers. Are, the kick, are we talking about the stickers temperature? Are we talking about the, cool, the stickers are awesome? Yes, I agree, they're awesome. Good. Let's look at our words on this page. We have a few. Begin, the form of the verb begin, to start something. He began the day drinking coffee. Began. Began, good. To start something in the past. How about cool? Cool, something fun and light. He did some cool tricks on his skateboard. Cool. Good. Put cool stickers on the tree. Last one. Sure. Sure. Yes. Or agreeing with something. When our friend asked us to play, we said sure. Sure. Good. And look at the bottom right hand corner right there. Check out that tree. Lots more detail now, huh? I know, it needs a person, like me, Laurel said. She grinned and drew a girl. It needs a boy, too, said Carlos. Okay, said David. Carlos drew a boy with an orange shirt. Let's stop in sequence. What was added on this page? What was added? Go back in your text if you need to. That's why it's there. Any question you ever have, if you're reading a story, you can almost always find it if you go back in your text. Yes, I see Laurel came up, and that's who this is with the yellow headband right here. And she grinned and drew a girl. There was one more thing added on this page. What was it? Yes, Carlos came and drew a boy with what color shirt? With an orange shirt. Yep, and there they are right there. Good. And I can see Laurel, she grinned. And if I didn't know what grinned meant, I know this new person here must be Laurel, so she's smiling. So maybe I knew that that's what it meant. Let's check it out. Grinned, a form of the verb grin, to give a big smile. The hostess grinned at the guests entering the restaurant. Grinned. Grinned. Past tense. Let's go to that next page. Kira quickly added a row of fluffy clouds. 
Brandon drew a cat and a dog. Thea added a smiling turtle. Wow, they added a lot on this page. Kira added fluffy clouds. Brandon drew a cat and a dog and a smiling turtle. So we have three more things added there. Birds would look nice, said Lee May. She drew two flying in the sky. It needs a rainbow too, said Rosie. She set to work with a fistful of colors. Wow, so, so many things are being added here. She drew two birds and then there's a rainbow and she drew a fistful. So she took a fistful of crayons and then started to write it. And you can see that in the picture down here. Oh, and I'll move Mrs. Chessock so you can get a better view of David's drawing. There we go. Look at all that detail. And because we're talking about sequencing, we know all of this started with one thing, which was our brown tree. Interesting. And if you go ahead and look over on the right, right there, you can see how beautiful that picture looks up close. Let's check out some of our vocabulary on this page. Fluffy, light and soft. I like napping on fluffy pillows. Me too. Fluffy. Good. And the last one? Fistful. The amount of something you can hold in one hand. I needed a fistful of dirt to fill the hole. Fistful. Very nice. Good work. Let's go to that next page. The bell rang for class to begin. That was fun, said Ryan. We made a great picture, said Kira. See you at recess, David? asked Amanda. Sure, David agreed. Wow, they look pretty happy, don't they? We could do a little cause and effect here. What's made them feel so happy? Look at all their smiling faces. Why are all these students so happy? What makes you think they're so happy here? What did they all do together? I think that I agree with what some, what some of you are saying. All of them worked together to create this beautiful drawing and now they have it. Look at it, it looks so nice. Ooh, I like this page. At the end of the day, David looked at the picture again. Then he wrote, our class picture, neatly on the bottom and hung it on the bulletin board. Wow, he did write that pretty neatly. Why do you think he wrote our class picture under this? Why didn't he say David's drawing? What caused him to write our class picture? Was it just David's drawing? No, the entire class worked together to complete this. So that's the effect of why. Okay, he did our class picture. And he wrote it neatly. Neatly, carefully and without making a mess. She folded neatly all of the laundry. Neatly. Our laundry example again. David walked home from school. On the way, he saw the beautiful cave. There it is. When he got home, David took off his boots and hung up his jacket. He found a pencil and a fresh piece of paper. David thought for a moment. Then he made a drawing of the tree he had seen. Wow, why do you think he made a drawing of this tree? What caused him? The effect was he's doing a drawing. Why did he do this drawing? Because he saw this tree on his walk home and he likes the tree probably. Can anyone tell me the first thing he did when he got home? in your text. 
he took off his boots and hung up his jacket. So first, he took off his boots. I bet a lot of you do that first in the winter too. David's sister came over to the table. Nice drawing, she said, but it needs something. David looked up. His sister smiled. It needs. Oh, what do you think she's going to want to add? Everybody loves adding to his drawings. To hang on your wall. I think so, too, said David. Then he wrote, my drawing, neatly on the bottom, and hung the picture right above his bed. So she didn't think it needed anything. She liked David's drawing just the way it was. And now he can put my drawing. Why can he just put my drawing? Because it was just him that completed this work. All right, and that's the last page of our story today. I'm going to hop through that poem there, okay? And I'm going to read you a couple questions. So let's read number two together and see if we can't answer it. Two. In David's drawing, what does Jamal add to the picture? Oh, man. What does Jamal add to the picture? If we weren't sure, we don't remember, if I can think, hmm, I know he added something. What do we do if we're not sure? We go back in our text. So let's go back and look for the keyword Jamal because that's who we're looking for. I know that didn't happen at home. We're on his walk home. He was at school. So let's go back and you can tell me stop when you see Jamal or you see the word Jamal. Let me see it on this page. Oh, there he is. I see him and I see the word Jamal over here just holding by the stickers over here. What did he want to put on? Say it. Yes, Jamal put on the stickers. But what would you add to David's drawing? I think I would add, maybe I'd draw a little swing off to the side. Think about what you would add. Maybe a little squirrel. Good, good reading today. And good going back in your text. Good sequencing and cause and effect. Very, very, very nice job. You guys are rock stars. So today you are going to deal with your vocabulary, all right? Your vocabulary page is inside your skills practice book, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. So you're on page 213 if you want to pause me. Go ahead and grab your skills practice book and turn to page 213. On page 213 you're going to see your gray box with all of the words that we focused on today. So this will be a review. You're gonna read your sentence and find the word that completes each sentence, okay? So, once you have that, you're gonna do your first page. Your next page is a bit of a challenge. You're going to review your vocabulary words and the definition. I need four sentences from you. Four beautiful written sentences. So, you get to choose any words you would like. Now, I would love you to do more than one vocabulary word in each sentence, but that's up to you. So, you can choose any of the words in these gray boxes, and then you are going to write me four sentences. One, two, three, four. So, for example, maybe I like the word fluffy a lot. Fluffy. So I would write a sentence using the word fluffy. What could I write? Hmm. The fluffy bunny got out of its nest. That's the sentence I would write with a capital, finger spaces, and an ending mark. Don't you dare forget all those three things, almost second graders, okay? You pick your words. I wanna see these beautiful sentences. I can't wait to read them. Okay, I will see you next time. Do your best work. 
post a picture of it on a Google Classroom so I can see your handwriting and I can comment on it. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and do your best work. I love you. I miss you. Goodbye.